Welcome to a new week and a new laboratory on Element a Day in May 2018. This week, I've created a highly classified space to be talking about some of the lesser known elements. Elements not often discussed amongst people outside of laboratories like this one. So this week, I'm going to share some information about elements that your primary school teachers may have left out of their curriculums. This mysterious and tantalizing group of elements starts with tantalum, element 73 on the periodic table. Now, there's always a variety of ways to talk about an element for these videos. Sometimes I talk about an element's discovery, its etymology or namesake, its uses, etc. Now, we've been in the past the last couple of weeks talking about some history, so today, let's talk about right now. Let's talk about the Congo, a country in Central Africa with huge amounts of today's element, tantalum, in the form of a mineral called coltan, which is actually a combination of columbite and tantalite. This coltan is mined and refined down to tantalum in the form of a heat-resistant powder capable of holding a very high electric charge. Because of that, tantalum is worth a pretty penny. It's used in electronics all over the world. It's probably in the cell phone or computer or TV you happen to be watching this on, and the demand for it is only growing. But there are a lot of ethics issues when it comes to mining coltan. I read in an article that the average worker in the Congo makes about $10 a month, but a coltan miner can make 10 to $50 or more in a week. This is a super lucrative business over there, and one that has helped fund civil war in Central Africa. So because of this, there is legislation to keep the mines conflict free, meaning profits cannot be used to fund wars. However, investigative reporting tells us that mines that are not government patrolled are often overtaken by rebels. This has all sorts of consequences, including the killing of endangered species for food like gorillas and elephants, displacement of local tribes, and war funding. I suppose all of this to say that technology it doesn't exist in a vacuum. The materials we use in everyday things, they're sourced from real parts of the world, from real people, with some real life circumstances going on. It's just something to think about. Thanks for watching today's Element and Element a Day in May. Elements we don't really talk about continues tomorrow with Rhenium. Element a Day in May.